Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's start this series here. This one I'm going to focus on just a random entry. Once again, we're having the cryptids at wikia.com website. But as always, I'm looking forward to your upcoming suggestions and I'll be doing some more of those very, very soon. This one has to do with yet another lake monster or another lake type monster. Once again, found within a body of water. In this case here in the United States. I know a lot of you are fans out there of these lake type monsters so lo and behold this random entry will definitely suit you and as far as the information associated with this creature despite the fact that it's right there within that lake and obviously within a populated area it still remains almost frustratingly rare to see this creature not even just the encounters let alone the footage like anything involving photographs or anything involving videos stuff along those lines although there is at least one single picture that apparently showcases this creature in all of its glory or as much of its glory as possible but it has to do with this you're looking at it now and in fact that's the picture in of itself it's known colloquially as the paddler so let's go ahead and let's talk about all the fascinating information associated with this lake type u.s monster so what is this paddler? Well, again, it's a lake monster that's found in the United States, specifically in Idaho, and very specifically at a lake called Lake Pend Oriel. I hope I'm saying that correctly, Lake Pend Oriel. And this is a pretty unique lake for several reasons. First, just a brief history as far as the lake in of itself. It's actually one of the largest lakes within the United States, the largest one there within the state of Idaho. And if you consider at least it's it's almost unfathomable deep that it has it goes at a maximum up to 1150 feet deep in certain regions it makes it the fifth deepest one within the United States this plays an important part because considering again just how deep this lake goes you could totally imagine a creature like this as far as this paddler inhabiting that area and staying super super secret and having no one see it for the longest time ever and in fact um, in a weird kind of link type way this lake and its deepness plays so well that the united states and the united states navy has utilized certain areas there to conduct underwater submarine research so think of it this way if the U.S. can absolutely use this location to delve some super secret type of submarine uh, trips or submarine descents and have no one else be the wiser, you could totally imagine like a monster, a lake type monster, be within the same body of water and have that super secrecy as well. Like the two definitely go hand in hand. More on that here in a minute as far as that underwater research and again how it could lead to a sightings associated with this paddler. Now, as far as the creature in of itself, let's talk about those characteristics. It's imagine your average Loch Ness type monster, like down to the color, down to the size. It's measured apparently at over 20 feet long. It undulates above and then below the water as it swims. In fact, various eyewitnesses have stated that it likes to just go slightly above and then it goes slightly below whenever it comes across the lake in of itself. In other words, when it's crossing certain areas of the lake. And then apparently it has a very deep, like grayish tone to it, which also makes sense because at least from a distance, it would absolutely blend into the scenery surrounding it, as opposed to, let's say, having like a shocking white color or any type of yellow color. Anything like that would just totally not work as far as um, uh, staying with uh, out of sight by, by being there in that lake. Instead, having this grayish color will absolutely work. But again, having at least a classic Loch Ness type monster along with the size and the way it moves, you could imagine also the long neck associated with it, maybe even those oversized flippers as well. And there you have it. That's essentially what the paddler is. And then as far as the sightings associated with it, interestingly, 
interestingly enough, even though it goes back a certain number of years, apparently this is a creature that is still somewhat relatively new, and I use that almost in quotations. A lot of the other lake-type monsters that I've talked about, I mean, you go back hundreds of years on those. Here, though, the earliest known sighting is apparently 1944, and that interestingly ties in once again the United States, the United States Navy, and the way they were testing submarines there within that lake. Somehow, some way, either one is getting misconstrued for the other, or maybe the testing by the submarines there caused something to come out from the lake in of itself. So think of it that way. And when I was reading this information, that's one of the first things that came to my mind. Something was awoken by the testing of these submarines, because when you think even further into it, before those submarines were there, nothing else could have gone that deep into the lake. Nothing mad made because there was nothing in existence that could go that deep. But now all of a sudden, during that specific time period, you had these submarines suddenly in an area where no one else has gone before, at least, you know, down there deep within the lake. And then that caused whatever it was down there to stir open or come above where it normally wouldn't. And then that's at least my theory as to why, starting in that same exact period, now you have this paddler now becoming a, a, a sighting there. But yes, as far as 1944, that seems to be the magical year that this paddler was first being seen. And then you have to cut to the 1970s, and then that's where more stories came out associated with this lake-type monster. Apparently, in September 1977, there was a young girl who was attacked by what she described as a strange creature near an area there called Sandpoint City Beach. And then it was during the reporting of some local journalists, that's where they dubbed it the Pend Oriel Paddler. That's where the name was first originated from, and it stuck. It does have an interesting name. Once I saw this random entry and I saw the word Paddler, I immediately wanted to talk about it because it does have a hook type name. It definitely draws attention associated with it. And then cut to the 1980s, the sightings must have been so frequent, not rampant, I wouldn't necessarily call it that far, but at least not rare at the same time, that there was an expedition that was led by a North Idaho College professor, a guy by the name of James R. McLeod. And uh, he did a research there. He even called it CryptoQuest 84. He was going to do an investigation to try to find out once and for all, use this as a conclusion of sorts to see, was there a lake-type monster within that area? Was there something that could inhabit that specific location? And so he collected testimonies, a lot of people that had seen these strange sightings within the lake and of itself. And interestingly enough, that's where more information came about with regards to this. There were rumors and people were apparently seeing this happening as well, but nobody, of course, could confirm it because of the super secrecy involved. But the Navy was at that time and ever since then testing out submarine research within the deep end parts of the lake. That's where this an investigation was able to bring more of that light out. And so once that was confirmed, including the notion that there was this mini sub that was used, a Pisces 1 mini sub in the 1960s, that's where, again, there was more link associated with the subs being used there and how they could potentially be misconstrued for the sightings of the paddler. Because nobody would expect a submarine to be within that lake. Obviously, those submarines can be pretty large when it comes to their size. And so you would think that a lake wouldn't have anything larger than just small fish, anything along those lines. So when you see something that massive, let's say parts of it at least showcasing 20 feet plus in length, you're immediately thinking that it could be a monster. It could be something else in terms of a cryptid there within that lake. The last thing you're thinking is that it's a secret submarine. And so that's why, again, when I was mentioning that earlier, how things are kind of linked with one another, the sightings and how they could be almost like fake, misconstrued type sightings. That's essentially what this research was bringing about. But it was also going into the idea that, yes, there truly was something within the water that was more of an animal, something else that was inhabiting that location that just hasn't been found. And then there was another 
great sighting on Memorial Day back in 1985. That's where apparently there was a trip that was being done by a lady named Julie Green and her friends. They were there on that lake and then they were just in their boat and that's when they saw, according to them, a V-shaped wave crossing about 200 yards right in front of their boat. This was her quote. There was clearly something in the water ahead of us that was undulating, coming in and out of the water. And when she actually gave chase, using again the strength of the boat to try to get up to this creature, this one, this thing, and her boat was about 22 feet in length. She saw that it was comparable to the size of her boat, but it also was swimming still much faster than her boat itself. Itself. So it goes to show how much speed this paddler has because a boat in of itself can go pretty fast. And I was imagining that it was one of the smaller boats too, the ones that can go almost like a zip from here to there. But no, this was this creature, this paddler was far on distancing it whenever they were trying to catch up to it. And then the most infamous picture is the one I had showed before back in 2007, March 29th to be specific, there was a photograph that was taken. And as you can see here, that's where it showcases something on the bottom right-hand corner. It has created, once again, the classic V-shaped wave showcasing something was crossing that area, or crossing that area of water. And then that's where you see now some humps that are associated with whatever that thing is. It is believed that this image is the closest thing to something showcasing that, yes, this is the paddler. This is something that was actually captured. It was captured on a photograph. And what you're looking at is a prehistoric creature, a sturgeon maybe even, something else that was again a Loch Ness type monster right in the flesh, right there within that photograph itself. Pretty fascinating. If this is actually the real deal, then this could be a gold mine when it comes to this type of photographs of cryptids because this is very, very, very con conclusive proof. But that's pretty much it. That's all the information associated with this paddler, once again found in Idaho, specifically in that lake, Lake Pend Oriel. If anyone knows any more information, anything else I might have missed, then please post those comments below. How about those of you that live by the area too? Maybe you frequented it with your boat or maybe just having fun by the water and of itself. If you know any more local stories, not even then of the of the creature itself, but of those infamous submarine tests that were being done there, then please post those comments below too. All right, everyone. Thanks again as always. Take care.